Adding blood to your miniatures can really boost how good they look. Having blood covering your warrior's sword or dripping down your vampire's chin really adds that extra layer of detail and looks great. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can take your blood effects to the next level by creating dripping blood like you see on this miniature here. Now for this tutorial, we'll be making use of some UV resin to create the blood drips. Now this particular resin is great for our needs because it dries incredibly quickly when you shine UV light on it, which will let us build up our layers without having to spend time waiting for each one to cure. The product I'm using here is from Green Stuff World, as is the torch, but you could use any generic UV torch instead. This particular product is the transparent version too. They also do a lime colored one, but that won't be much use for our blood effects. In addition to the resin, we'll also need some monofilament wire or fishing wire. A spool of this is pretty cheap to get a hold of on eBay. So to begin with, we need our miniature. I've chosen a blood reaver for this because if any miniature needs blood, it's going to be a corn one. You'll need to finish the painting and basing of your miniature as we'll be applying our blood effects over the top. Next, we'll be fixing our wire to a point on the model that we want to start our drip from. This wire will act as a support structure for our application of the drips later on. To fix the wire in place, I will be using some of the resin. Apply a small drop of the resin to your chosen point, place the wire inside the drop, and then shine your UV light onto it. This will cause the resin to harden very quickly, fixing our wire into place. Now I should note a couple of things here. When working with this resin, make sure you do so in a well-ventilated area because they do give off some strong fumes as they cure. Additionally, try to avoid working in direct sunlight as the UV from the sun will cause your resin to cure prematurely. So now that our wire is fixed into place, we will need to pull it tight and we need to pull it straight down. I'm tackling this particular issue with the Citadel painting handle with the armatures. The clips of the arms allow me to hold the wire in place that I need it to be in. If you don't have something like this, you could instead wrap the wire below your miniature and hold it into place with some tape or some putty. With our guide wire in position, we can bring in our resin once again. Now I'm going to start off by applying the resin straight from the bottle and carefully dispensing it towards the top of the wire and letting it flow downwards a little before I expose it to the UV. I'm doing this in a slow, incremental way and building up the layers and the thickness of the blood very steadily. If there are areas that you want to control your application of a little bit more, then dispense the resin onto a palette and use a brush to apply it to the desired location. If you do use a brush though, make sure it's not a good one because this will wreck the brush. Now this whole process can be a bit tricky at first, so I would recommend practicing on a spare miniature to get to grips with how the resin works without ruining the model you spent hours painting. So once you've completed your application, you'll be left with a clear drip, but at the moment, it's not very blood-like. However, this can be easily solved by using some strongly pigmented wash. I'm using Green Stuff World Sanguine and Red for this, but Games Workshop's Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint could also be used as well. Simply paint over your resin with your chosen red, allow the first layer to dry, and then apply a second to get a good, even color. Once the painting is completed and is fully dried, you can then clip off any remaining wire from the bottom of the drip. Finally, to protect the paint and also to give it a glossy, wet appearance, coat the red blood with some gloss varnish of your choice. You will also notice here that I have applied some of the red wash over the axe blade too. If you've done this as well, apply a little gloss varnish to these areas as well. And here we have the finished miniature complete with blood effects. Now this result is a fairly basic application of these techniques and with some practice you can use this as a basis for more complicated blood drips and splashes. Now if you enjoyed this video and have suggestions for other similar extra miniature effects videos you would like to see me tackle in the future then please do let me know in the comments below. If you're looking to support me in making these videos you can do so by checking out my Patreon page which will allow you to donate from me to from as little as a dollar a month. That just helps to pay for the miniatures, paints, and equipments that I use in these videos. For anyone looking to chat about all things wargaming with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below. And so, the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.